this and we're going to put it on YouTube, thinking like, oh no, I'm going to have to shut the comments off because who knows what they're going to say on YouTube, you know? Um, so what, what, how, how do we get over that? Well, you know, um, doing these practices, this body movement. What, what, do you That's have such a that? wonderful thing for you to share, Zen. I love it that you shared that because it, I, I think that is such a common experience for people that we learned from so many different places that our bodies are bad and they do bad things. And so you, you should just really control them and put them in a box. And, you know, a lot of what people learn because we learn thousands of messages about how to be and how to move even before we get into school. By the time we've gotten into school, we've literally learned over 6,000 ways just how to move. And it's different for boys and girls. They learn how you're supposed to move and how you're not supposed to move. And all of that stuff about being appropriate really keeps people from enjoying the spontaneous flow that your body is meant to do. Your body is meant to express. Humans are meant to express. And when we don't, we get ourselves really in distress because we hold ourselves back. And it actually takes measurable physical energy to hold yourself back. And when you do that, you feel separate. You feel separate from yourself and you feel separate from other people. And I think that's one of the big issues of our time is that people feel like they're just a big head moving around in the world, but they're unconnected to other people. So I really want people to know that your body is your best friend. Your body is giving you messages all the time about your intuition about what you really are meant to be doing, your purpose, your feelings, who you want to communicate to, who's wanting to communicate to you. There is this vast highway of information in your body experience that you can get access to simply by beginning to move, by beginning to listen to yourself, just the way that you were describing, Zen, if you realize that you got embarrassed you were moving and you got embarrassed and then you can start wondering, yeah. well, gosh, I wonder how that's familiar. Where would I have learned to be embarrassed about just moving my body? And that can then give you more of a connection to other people, more of a connection to their experience and why people feel so frozen in their being in the world. It's very common. I love that. I um. I want to talk more in a minute, but but before we do, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about body wisdom, and then we've got some things that 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 Katie calls shift, and I want to talk to her a little about and have her walk us through that. So this is more interactive for everyone. But I also want to let you know that you're able to ask us questions, and there's two ways that you can ask us questions. Okay, one is you can type it in. And then we have a, somebody that'll put it up on the screen so we can read it. And Katie and I will be able to kind of work on answering those questions for you. And you're welcome to address them to both of us or either. It's all great. And then the other way is, is we actually have a screener and you can do a video question. So if you have your own video camera that you use for video chat or Skype or anything like that, what you can do is, is Vocal will walk you through how to set it up specifically. It's called the Setup Wizard. You'll see it on your own screen there. And then once you've set that up, you can go ahead and email or video chat in and have a three-way conversation with us about this. So I'd love to do that. We have a screener that'll make sure that you're all set up to go. For some of you, you may not want to do that, but um, I would personally love to see you. So if you have the courage um, and can take a step forward and have a conversation with us, I would be absolutely thrilled to talk to you. <laughs> so Katie, can you talk a little bit about have mentioned and, and how to like, what does that mean? And then maybe lead mm -hmm. us through a few. Sure. Um, in our um, in-person seminars, our live seminars, one of the things that we explore with people is what we call the presencing cycle. That in order to really enjoy your life, the first requirement is being present. <laughs> you know, actually being here in your life. <laughs> and when people are not present, what I've called what people do is drift. They drift away from an experience 
of being here. So they might drift away, uh, for example, into worrying or uh, making lists or anticipating what's going on in the future or they might drift by um, eating a lot or drinking or uh, those things we were talking about earlier criticizing or trying to control so those drifts take you away from the experience of being here and being able to interact with life and the shift moves that we teach both in our seminars and uh, on our website are ways that you can simply come back to being present and continuing to be fully in your life and enjoying it and making choices in a free way that allows you to have the most fun with your life while you're here. What a concept. So uh, uh, one of the shifts <laughs> that I enjoy the most is what we call committing. And committing, most people think of as kind of putting yourself on a kind of rigid path. And the way we experience committing is of taking your whole self forward in a chosen direction. So everyone who's watching, I'd like you to imagine that you're standing on the edge of a swimming pool. And you've decided that you want to swim. You don't know how to swim. And here you are at the edge of the pool. And what would be the first requirement? What do you need to do in order to learn how to swim? You need to get in the pool. So committing <laughs> is taking your whole right. self and getting in the pool. So you could think of something right. that you want to create or something that you want to manifest in the next period of time. And you can think of that as your pool. And then committing is literally taking your whole self in that chosen direction. So when you commit, it would be something like, um, I commit to learning how to recognize my feelings. I commit to enjoying my breathing. Uh, I commit to finding out my essence pace and moving through my life in a way that allows me to be in touch. Those are commitments that get you into the pool. And then the job becomes recommitting. Because the moment you commit, okay. so for example, if you commit to releasing some weight and you want to lose some weight, right. almost always you're going to get a pop quiz from the universe. Someone's going to show up with a five pound box of candy just for you. And there's that moment where you can drift or you can recommit. You can go, oh yeah, that's so tempting and I'm gonna take a whiff of those and a little mm, chocolate and then you recommit. So mm -hmm. commitment is this wonderful place to both steer your choices and it's also a place to come home to. It was particularly valuable for me with the commitment that we talk about in Conscious Loving to revealing rather than concealing. Because I come from a long line of very skilled concealers. We, uh, we came from that you know, ethic of if you can't say anything nice, you don't say anything at all, and you don't ever say anything bad about anybody, etc. So learning how to reveal rather than conceal was a process for me of recommitting over and over again. So I choose, com I choose revealing rather than concealing. And again, I choose, I recommit to revealing rather than concealing. And I needed to do that literally hundreds of times before it became really a way of life for me. So the committing and recommitting are incredibly powerful tools that each of us can use and it's a shift it's a simple shift just like opening and closing your eyes just recommitting so I noticed also that I didn't get any extra points for drifting and then beating up on myself and feeling terrible and then recommitting that whole extra loop of the criticizing and the beating up on myself that didn't accelerate my evolution. What accelerated my evolution was recommitting. 
So committing and recommitting our 